Now, it's amazing to me. I've been pastoring here for 25 years. And I used to be invited to pastor's meetings. <laughs> and they, whenever they used to invite me, they don't have a lot of them anymore. It was always, you had to pray their way. And they would always say to the charismatic pastors, if the charismatic pastors got invited, that was a miracle. But if the charismatic pastors, you know, the tongue-talking pastors, tongue-talking church, if they for some reason got invited to, watch this, citywide unity, <laughs> they would pull the pastors together if they would include the charismatics, and they always would say, now don't pray in tongues. Well, why is it that you're singling out speaking in tongues? Why is that the polarizing objection? How come you can pray the way you pray, but I can't pray the way that I pray? And if you come over to my prayer meeting, you're going to pray the way that you pray. And I will let you pray the way that you pray. But they would always put a clamp. I mean, I would go to these meetings, they come over to me. Oh, now you know Pastor Hank. They didn't call me Pastor Hank, they called me Hank. They didn't want to identify with the title. But they would call the next guy, oh, pastor so-and-so. But me, I was just Hank. Which when people do that, it means they don't really respect you. That's why I don't call me Hank. Because it, it says to me, you don't respect me as a pastor. You're just trying to be, hey, that's a real cool guy. That's just Hank. He's my buddy. No, I ain't your buddy. Just thought I'd teach you that. Now, here's the thing. I mean, you wouldn't go to Donald Trump. Hey, Donald. Well, I suppose if you didn't respect him, you would do that. But here's the point. They would pull me aside. Hey, now, don't speak in tongues. Don't pray in tongues. This is a prayer meeting. So one day, we had a prayer meeting. And all the wonderful pastors were there. And they said, and they didn't say anything to me. They just said, we just want to hear from the pastors of our city. And so nobody was praying. So I lifted up my voice and I started praying, Father, I thank you that you hear me always. And I thank you, Karamuna Ite Risekea Iparamasaya Miandesika. Man, I know what Jesus felt when I opened my eyes. All eyes were fastened upon me and they wanted to lead me out of Omaha and kill me. And they never invited me ever since. But why? Why is the polarizing issue? Why? Because there's power in praying in tongues. Plus, I thanked God the last time they invited me. I'm like, I don't want to go to a boring prayer meeting where nothing happens. That's why you never change the city. I don't do things in the name of religion. Because, it, you know, it, it sounds good, but, but, but that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. All right, so this is what we're looking at. Are you still here? Okay, okay, okay. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Notice they all. Now, I want to make uh, emphasis on all. Now, let's go to Genesis 7, verse 11. I want you to see this. Now, any time that you look at the Old Testament, you have to identify with the fact that that is a historical literal moment that has happened but you got to pull it over into the new testament and, and and look for the new testament application or understanding okay now how where is that in the new testament now revealed okay it's concealed in the old but it or in the new testament is it's revealed it's light has been shining on it right remember how they would put the blood of a lamb on a doorpost if they ate the lamb and all that, right? Well, that was an Old Testament example of what we have the right with Jesus' uh, blood as the lamb, correct? Right. Passover, Old Testament, and the New Testament revealed its holy communion. It's the table of the lamb. You know, that's just a quick example. But look at Genesis 7. Now, you, you can't just read over this. You've got to look at it and realize that this actually happened, but there's a spiritual application Okay, remember the word all. Why am I saying this? What would happen? It's the question that the Lord asked me before Pentecost Sunday. What would happen 
If all of those who say they are Christians in the earth would be filled with the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues, what would be the state of the earth, the state of the nation? What would be heaven's involvement in the earth, heaven's access? What, what would be the state of politics? What would be the state of the church, the state of believer? Because, I mean, there's power in praying in tongues. What if people just increased it and did it more? It was the other question the Lord said. So you can see on the day of Pentecost, they were, they, they were all, all, all. Now watch what happens in Genesis 7, 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were what? All. How many fountains? All. The fountains of what? The great deep broken up. Now you might look at that and go, okay, so that was the earth. There was fountains, earthquakes, things that broke open literally. They all did. Now, how is that carried over into the New Testament? All the fountains of the great deep. All right, I'm going to ask you a question. Where is then prophetically you, the great deep, not the earth, but the great deep also prophetic application? Right here. Jesus said in John 7, verses 37 through 39. Verse 37, he said, let him that thirst, let him come and drink. And then he goes on in verse 38. He said, out of his belly, or out of your belly, where? Your belly, your deep, shall flow, watch, plural. It wasn't river. It was rivers, plurality, rivers of living water. Now, who is it up to for those rivers to flow? You, if you're willing to break open the fountain of your deep. It's up to you. Who is it up to to determine the depth of the rivers? Ezekiel 47 you got Ezekiel who goes and he sees now a vision of the throne of God. And proceeding or coming from the throne of God is a mighty river. And it flows and it's so he can measure it. And the first measure is ankle deep. Then the next measure, Ezekiel 47, chapter 47, is knee. Then it comes up to the waist and then you can swim in it. So that's, again, New Testament, John 7. 37 through 39, rivers, plural, it's up to you. How deep do you want to go? It depends upon how much you break open the deep. Now watch, Ezekiel 47, there was the ankle deep. It was the shallow water. And that's where a lot of Christians like to live, in the shallow. Because the more shallow it is, the more you can enjoy flesh. You, you, right. That's where a lot of Christians are. They, they pray in nice little tongues if they do. Lama, lama, CK. See Dick run. See Jane kick the ball. Lama, lama, CK. Right? And they don't realize that you're staying in spiritual shallow. There's a depth. There's a level of radical Christianity that you can live in. And it comes with you identifying how God communicates to you and how he takes you and makes you stronger and how you go deeper in him. You can have the level of ankle. You can have the level of knee. You can swim. I mean, I want to swim with God. I want to be in the deeper things of God. So watch this. He said, and this is so powerful, going back to Genesis 7, 11. So out of... The fountains of the deep, out of your belly. Notice he said out. He didn't say in. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the in. So now that they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they have to now get that river out of them. Notice he says out of your belly. Well, how do you get that river? You break open the fountain of your deep. How do you do it? Koramasa, rebase. I'm beginning to break open the fountains, the river flow of my spirit. Now imagine, again, Acts 2, 4. They all began 
to open their fountains. They all began to let the river flow. Right? What would happen, go back to Genesis 7, 11, if they all, all the fountains, you as a fountain, would begin to pray in tongues and not be satisfied with shallow, fleshy, carnal Christianity. And you came on Wednesdays and learned how to pray stronger. What would happen to your Christian life? What would happen to the state of the church? Man, we would be a force. We would be that which Jesus is coming back for. Not a rescue mission, but for a glorious church. Now look at Psalm, Psalm 42, verse 7. So God is deep. How I many you know God is deep? He's infinite wisdom. God is so smart. You know, I was telling the Lord the other day, I said, Lord, you are beyond brilliant. And I said, Lord, give me some of your brilliance, man. I have the mind of Christ, but give me more. I just want more wisdom and understanding in the revelation of the knowledge of you, God. But notice the deep, okay? Notice the big D, the big D and the little D. Deep, who's the deep? God. God is the greatest depth. And he calls unto what? The little deep. Where's the little deep? In the fountain of your deep. He calls unto your spirit. That's where your spirit man is, out of your belly. He's calling. How do you connect with him? Oh, shika. Maya, mianga. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. He that speaks an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. It's deep calling to deep. And every time you pray in tongues more, you are increasing the depth and measure of your spiritual experience with God. You know, the more I pray in tongues, man, the more I I, I walk, not only in the spirit, but more, man, heaven. (laughs) I'm very aware of things around me, things around me. Because the deep is always calling. Are you listening? How do you break open the fountain of your deep? You pray in tongues. What was Jesus' first miracle? Empty water pots, fill them up with water. And then... As they filled it with water, a supernatural transformation took place. The water supernaturally turned to what? Wine. What were they accused of on the day of Pentecost? Being filled with what? New wine. But what did Jesus say to that wine? Leave it in the empty vessels that... No, he said, draw it out. Out of your belly. Out of your deep. Genesis 7. Break open. Get that Fountain activated, moving. Get the flow of tongues, the language of the spirit out of your spirit. And go deeper. All right? Go back to Genesis 7, 11. So in the 600 years of Noah's life, the second month, the 17th day of the month, that same month, all the fountains, New Testament, 120, came together and they began to speak in other tongues. Now their deep is broken open. Watch what happens. Because of what they're activating in their spirit and out of their spirit in the earth realm begins to touch beyond them. And the windows of heaven were open. Now that's the natural thing that happens. But what happens when you are on the earth and you begin to break open By praying in tongues, the fountain of the deep, the deep one, the deep one is calling you. And you, oh, tokorabasa. Guess what happens? Heaven. The windows of heaven. Something begins to open. Man, you start hearing in the spirit, seeing in the spirit, knowing in the spirit, walking in the spirit, living in the spirit. Come on. Walking in the blessings of an open heaven. You know what open heaven is? It's like, man. Every day is a God day. Every day, man, I'm walking in the blessing after blessing after. And and literally it's Psalm uh, 23, goodness and mercy. My goodness, who's that following me? Oh, you are goodness and mercy. Carabasa, quito robosa. Oh, your goodness and mercy, quito robosa, kahaya bataya. Mita debuto, goodness, ha, mercy, quito rebasa, muta, ite, urus, 